Hi everyone, welcome back to Crazy for Retro. I'm Peggy Lou. Norm says hello. I'm going to be showing you some of our spring decor, starting with the living room today. I'll do some of the other rooms later on. I apologize for not getting many videos out in February, but I'll try a little harder this month. I hope everything's going well with you also and your spring has started out like a lamb. We have some very fun new things that we found at thrift stores and antique shops that I can't wait to show you. And also uh, some new decor changes. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee or something to drink and relax. I hope I don't put you to sleep either, but thanks for being here. Let's go look first at something crazy that I decided to do with our windows. Let me walk over there. We had some shears that some of you may have, may have noticed were too short. These go right to the windowsill, but I'm still not happy. It's just that I really wanted these shears. Not only are they very glamorous with metallic gold trees, which is really fun to me. I love the fact that it's metallic gold because we typically have gold trimmed mid-century modern lamps in the window here. I did take the lamp away so I could show you some green glass instead today. But they did not have the right length for our window to go way up at the top. And we did just have a plain curtain rod up there right now. And just want to see what we think of these. They came in one day from Amazon. Absolutely amazing delivery time, but they didn't have anything long enough to reach the floor. So I had to go with the shorter ones, and the only thing I could do is to move these down to three quarters of the way. It would be to our first bar in the window up there. Our windows do have dividers in them. And they do actually have in the same material, they have uh, a valance. You know, you just end up with holes up there to patch up and it's a lot to think about. What do I want to mess around with? So right now, I'm just happy. They're very inexpensive curtains, polyester, washable. Um, they are considered semi-sheer. And our shears were just very, very plain, and they were sheer. So you could see through in here. Um, in the evenings or early morning when it's dark out, Norm didn't really like the fact that people could see through all the way to our dining room table where we were sitting. I forgot to mention, we decided to purchase another pair that won't come for a couple days. We thought that it should be fuller. What I will be able to do is just slide them open easily because there's such big rings up there. So that won't be a problem when it's a cloudy day and we wanna open up the curtains and get way more light in here. So this is just some of the green glass that I've collected over the years. Um, it's very pretty patterns and I did try to keep the darkest ones in the window here because that would help light it up. This one is a very, very pretty bottle that is in poly. Uh, I believe these are in poly, the two vases that match. Those were both thrifted for unbelievable prices that I found them for. 
But I thought it would be fun this year to just stick a little fern branch in these. It just helped add a little more greenery. This big bottle was a gift from my brother. Many years ago, he gave us a lot of large, I shouldn't say bottle, large floor vase is what they're considered. It's probably Viking. And there's another one on the mantel, both of them olive green. They were both from my brother, Steve. We are missing my brother. It's very strange to think of him as being gone now to heaven. So it's, it's just really different for us. We put the birdcage back up. I'm gonna put the light on because they are very backlit. But it is a, a planter. I thought it would be very fun to have these parakeets in this old birdcage that used to be ours for many, many years ago. And I did decide I didn't want it anymore, and I gave it to my brother Steve. And then he is gone now, so we took it back and wanted to hang it up. So Norm helped with all the figuring out of the chain up there for me. Sometimes uh, I do put a smaller bird cage in the middle there, or I could put another plant in the middle there. And I have shown you this faux spider plant in lovely California pottery drip planter that he helped fix with the chain on it because when I found it years ago, it had nothing on it. Down there, I just put a grape cluster. We had all of our huge grape clusters on the top wall, top of the wall that is dividing our living room and kitchen. So you're going to be surprised when you find out what I decided to put up there now. Took the grapes down. Norm hasn't had any time to work on this Grundig vintage German, I think 60s stereo turntable is inside that door there that opens up. We did show it in the last video, but what I want to show you here is something really, really fun that I just found in an antique shop. It's a very large fish figurine and not only is it super fun because of the flower look flower power look but the glaze actually has gold dust in it I was so amazed it was in an antique shop in Anoka Minnesota and it was way down on a bottom shelf and I thought I saw what looked like a fin and pulled it out and was just so delighted. It is just the coolest thing. It is not open. It's not a planter. It's just a large fish statue. And there's no identification on it. I'm really surprised. Uh, wish I knew anything about it. If you do, I'd love to know what, if you've ever seen one, probably in a different color. Green would have been fun, but it's kind of cool on this too, and I couldn't wait to show you. I didn't want to wait till fall when I was putting more brown things out, so I just had to show you now. It was only $19.95. Over here, I want to show you a pair of spectacular Trojan horse bookends. They are kind of a rosy brown. They have uh, quite an interesting glaze on them. And I really don't know who made them. I don't think there's any marks on the bottom of them either, but I turned the one sideways over there because it would have been stretched out pretty far. But I had these for a long time, 
and decided that I was liking some of the others that I was finding better. And my sister, Melissa, just loves the horse head bookends. So I gave her several pair, three or four pair, a white pair, this pair, and a black pair. And I'm trying to remember if there was anything else. I don't think so. Oh, the Hager vase ones that are like my lime green ones over on the other side. And they're red. So she gave all of them back to me a week ago. I was pretty excited. I don't have anywhere to store them, but I'm pretty excited to have them back again. I wasn't making videos when I gave them to her, and she really didn't mind. She's got a lot of very nice things, and she just decided it was just sitting there collecting dust, not really being admired like it should be, so I am thrilled to show them to you now. I did show you this duck last year cute little planter we got for five dollars at up your alley i do not know if they're going to be continuing their business they say on their website that they are still trying to make decisions uh, what they want to do they've had their wonderful vintage store with a tremendous amount of mid-century modern in it for a very very long time and just feel like they want to travel and do some other things. So we wish them well. And we'd love to come back there and shop some more before they close up. But we'll see if they do open up this month. This is the olive glassware that I decided to put on this side. You've seen my Trojan horse face by Hager, I am I believe. So... Over the years, I have found various vases like this little one in a thrift store. And I think even some of the mid-sized ones there, but not the real big one. I did purchase that tall, crazy, triangle-shaped one in the back years ago. It's been in the basement window. I have all of our stretch swung vases in the basement window on a ledge. A long ledge so there's plenty of room to store them there and I just take some out um, for the videos whatever colors a lot of orange ones and green ones this I found in a thrift store too I love that compote or I guess apothecary that's what I call that yeah so this is hard reaching way up here I should get Norm up here to do this. Very strange angle. The the three of all three of them are new. I was so thrilled to find that middle vase with that crazy shape. This winter when we went to Cold Spring, Minnesota. Oh, it's just a wonderful piece. I'm so happy to have that. I should mention that this fish planter is quite large, as you can see by the books there, is from my brother quite a long time ago. It's kind of hard sometimes. I've got two fish from him and putting greenery in the back, it seems to want to fall backwards, I think because the, the fish top is kind of curved. so. It's a little difficult to put a plant in there. And this I've had for decades, as well as another one on the other side that's completely different than this one. Huge owl planter, so, so mid-century. I don't know that there's any markings on the bottom of it either, but I love it and it's from up in my bedroom. So I stole it from my owl bedroom to show it to you with the green stuff. I thought you'd enjoy that. So let's go over to, this is a new little vase. 
And I also had these in my bedroom, owl bedroom, for many, many years. This is one pair, um, the other's on the other side. And I also had these olive green, large lucite candles that I paired up with them, oh, decades ago. And these are Hager, the candle holders. I just was getting into vintage pottery when I found these so, so many years ago. And I've always loved them. The design is the same on the back. Nice little legs. So that's that. Let's look over here. I have shown these horse bookends. Uh, they're over a year old. And this is the very first crazy wild bookends that Norm and I found many, many, many years ago um, in a very funky, it was called East End Funky Stuff, I think, was the name of it. We found lucite napkin holders and the grapes and an old stereo console that we bought that was in our living room for years there and this pair of horse heads. It does have uh, a little bit of green tinge to this uh, speckled glaze. And I can tell you at the bottom if, I'll leave a note, if uh, there is some identification on the bottom. I believe it's just hobbyist. I don't know though. I mean, the eye looks pretty professional. So that is over there, the other one. Norm really likes these. They're obviously, they're probably just considered vases. I am using it as a bookend, but it's probably just a vase. What do you think? Probably. So I've just got some beans in there and a little bit of greenery. Now, down here, these two tree, ceramic tree uh, statues are just crazy. They're quite large, kind of textured brown underneath and they were in an antique mall just a couple weeks ago we went to Hudson Wisconsin it's called nostalgia this very very nice shop and they were way way high up I showed them to Norm when we got there and he wasn't real interested at first but I talked him into it I do have them angled here I'm going to take the light off because I'm now too close to the mirror. So, I did finally talk him into taking them down. I said, I really like them, Norm. I think they would be very fun on the mantle for spring, summer. We'll see how long I use them. I don't know if I would do something totally different than when I show you a, an Easter, Eastery, more, a lot more orange in here with the green. But these are marked on the bottom, made in Italy. And I thought, okay, well, that proves it's very, very nice ceramic. It's that thick. And you would think that a large ceramic piece like that made in Italy would be pretty pricey. They were selling the pair for $22. Now think about it, $11 for something that big? Italian pottery, I think it's a steal. Maybe a lot of people would think they're kind of ugly, but I thought they would be very fun with the horses that I also bought 
just a couple weeks ago. They are um, crazing a little. I don't know if we can see that, but it's obviously it's not important. I still love them. They're very old, and there was old green felt on the bottom. Now that is something I've heard is a sign of an older ceramic piece. The old thin green felt. So this I would call your celadon green. It's not typically something I would get, although I did show you a horse head over there with gold trim on it on my right that is more towards that color. So I thought these were very, very nice and they were $30 for the pair. So that's not that bad, I don't think, for very vintage horse figurines. It's going to want to focus on me if I get in the camera there. Now, here's the other uh, swung vase from my brother. Really artsy, isn't it? Because it's just so thin on the one side there. Yep, I got to be really careful with that one. It's actually my favorite. The bottom is very close to the other one, but I just love how that is so stretched out. I thought that was very neat. And I was very grateful to my brother many, many years ago to get that. So the trees are identical. One side is very different than the other side, as you can tell. So there is the other horse head. Very fun, wild, wild horse, isn't it? So let's look down below first before I go up. I love my huge Hager Swan that Norm bought me last year at this time for my birthday. So that is nice down there. And I do have these faux cacti, cactus. The one on the right is a light. I would have to go plug it in. Uh, he used to have it on the remote with the TV lamp and the fireplace, but it did get moved from the left over to the right now. And this was the craziest pot, huge uh, hobbyist piece. I just love it. This I've had outdoors, used it outdoors a lot because it really wasn't my favorite, the dark green, but it is actually a hull, very good quality planter, and I should be grateful to have it. It was purchased many years ago, and to me it was boring compared to the California pottery ones in bright orange and lime green that I was finding that were very dripped glaze. I was way more interested in them. But I guess that was a real deal. So I was using it for real plants. This planter Norm just brought home for me. Uh, he was somewhere out and about and found that so it actually did turn out to be kind of a fun pot to have this time of year since it's such a nice green very ribbed and it could be new I honestly know nothing about it I couldn't tell on the bottom whether it was new or not no markings but the artificial um Sansevera, mother-in-law's tongue, snake plant is a lot of fun in that pot. I had purchased two of them and I had them in separate pots last year in some videos, but I actually do like this much better. So let me zoom back out. 
and we'll look over here. I talked about the Hager horse heads here in the chartreuse that my sister Melissa gave me back, the red ones. So those will be nice next Christmas to take out. And you have seen my favorite, probably crazy, very art deco um, roadrunner. We think that's a roadrunner. I just love this. One of my very, very first California birds that I purchased that I think is what got me hooked on all the others. Here's the other owl. Very fun, a lighter green, a little bit smaller. Stole it from my owl bedroom and I just found this. It is greener than it's looking, it's not that pale. But it was just a very inexpensive piece that I found. Thought it would just be something a little quieter there in between. This is going to be shown for Easter. I'm going to put the light back on. It's a very large, I think, hobbyist, but who knows. I've collected just dozens of these hobbyist ceramic eggs in every color imaginable for many, many, many years. I absolutely love them. I have shown them to you in Easter videos all over the coffee table and elsewhere. But this was a real surprise and it, it was thrifted way after Easter. So it's been in a drawer and I just kind of ran across it and thought, oh, well, this is green enough. That kind of turquoise gold and green there. So I put it by the swan. I stole this owl from my bedroom. I think I have seen that owl in different colors too. Not quite that green and turquoise green. These two I just found and was very happy to find them uh, in Hutchinson, Minnesota, I think. <laughs> I don't know. We just have way too much fun running around antique shops because we're always looking for some cool things to add to our crazy collections and especially I love pottery and these probably hobbyist pieces. Those were really fun. Very inexpensive. I don't think they're that appreciated. There's the other Hager candle holder there. I put all of the greener glass that we've collected for many years. It's not so much olive. Uh, the one way in back, the tall skinny one, is probably a little more olive than the rest of them. This one here is kind of a fresh green and I just found this at Nostalgia in Hudson, Wisconsin, where I got the trees from. Isn't that neat? I thought that was really a cool bottle. I was thrilled to find that, and this was thrifted, I think. Uh, some of those, I always wonder if they're missing their top. The optic design call it. It's probably in Poli. Don't know about that one, but that one beautiful apothecary back there was only six dollars. Many years ago I found it in an antique shop in Hutchinson. This one I thrifted. Sorry if I'm shaking, I'm only hanging on with one hand. It's quite a reach for me. <laughs> I'm so short. I'm only 5'3 now. Just had a physical. What a bummer. I can't reach my cupboards anymore. So anyways, that didn't have a top on it. It was only like $3 at the Goodwill. But I know that's in Poli too, and it probably was an apothecary. This could be like Fenton, 
my couch leather couch is popping a little bit down there because I'm leaning on it sorry if you hear that and that is our pottery light up there that I've shown you before now this is gonna be hard again these are also three new pieces of pottery In the middle is um, Hager I have several pieces like that that I found and that was only nine dollars in an antique shop way up north it was ten and she said oh I'll give it to you for nine Wow ten was cheap and I just found this picture too and I don't remember where we were but I think it's pretty cool and it goes great with that piece and this other crazy one have no idea who made that my brother had it at his house so I was very happy to bring it home here to show you I I decided to get out the step stool <laughs> this is nuts I cannot get up here and spend a long time reaching to the sky. So I'm much better off now. I'm still reaching up though. There's some new pieces in here. This one on the right is new. And I'll never remember where I found all these. I, I probably had this, hmm. I don't know if I managed that in a fall video, the brown one. That one was from the state fairgrounds along with another one that is on the other end down here. It was a pair together, that one. I was so happy to find those. But anyways, I think I've had this one for a while, the little handled vase. Is that called an ewer or two? But this was a wonderful, getting a lot of glare, sorry. Let's go around this side. That was a wonderful find for $10, a great big vase. And the woman said she believed it was hobbyist, but boy, I find that hard to believe. I probably talked about that last fall in a video, that it's so professionally done, but no markings on the bottom. And that's a new purchase, I think. That jug-like looking one there, I don't know. And then that crazy drip glaze one with white on it. And that's a new purchase. Thought maybe I could get a better look at the glaze on that for you. Yeah, a lot of fun. And I did find like this one with the red spots on it. Actually, it's more like this one over here. That particular, even more so, it's like this one upstairs. I didn't bring it down. It's big. A big round planter type. I don't know. Maybe it's a vase, but it's quite large. So that will be in a fall video. So I hope you enjoyed seeing these at a better angle. Well, this gets to be a long video, doesn't it? I have so many things to show you. This is one of my favorite planters. Found it for $5 at the Pink Squirrel over a year ago. Put some different colored succulents in there. This is where Norm enjoys sitting in the morning. One of my crazy vintage pillows I have to show you. That is nuts. That's almost like cross stitch. <laughs> I don't know what that would be considered, but the back is a velour. It's just a brown velour. So over here, this is something new. 
I decided to do another one of my crazy ideas. Uh, we had a beautiful spaghetti swirled, uh, what do they call that when it's big thick loops? Not so spaghetti like this one over there, tiny, tiny strings. We had one over here that had the tiny white strings in the background, but it had big gold lucite loops all around it. And we had that there for many years, one of our first purchases. And I stole it for the turquoise bedroom upstairs because we put up that wild black and metallic gold, very Hollywood Regency looking shadow box from up your alley. And so it left it bare over here. <laughs> Um, I, you know, didn't really know what I was going to do ever with the fact that we have hooks up there in the ceiling for a hanging light, but someday you would not believe the hanging light that I wanted so badly. It was pottery and it was on sale 20% off. It was in Hutchinson, Minnesota. Oh, I've looked at it two different times now that we've been there and Norm just decided he was worried it was too heavy because where I wanted to hang it, where I just showed you that white and gold pottery one in the corner over there by the freestanding wall, um, it is not in a stud, he says. So he didn't want to risk it. Uh, I should insert a little video I took of it to show you how gorgeous that pottery light was. What a steal. These are very blue-green, obviously, with all that blue splatter glaze on them. They're pretty popular from what I've noticed, like you take Laura Caldwell, she would show something, a pair of those that she found and probably resold them. I know she doesn't keep very many things, but I found this in Hopkins, Minnesota, this pair. I had never seen them there before. We go there quite often. And uh, I talked Norm into them. I know they're nuts. Very, very crazy being that splattered. I don't know why they would do nutty glazes like that. It's artsy, yes, but I prefer something a little quieter like this. Would you believe I just found this at Bibles for Missions? I'm pretty sure, according to everything on the internet, it's Blue Mountain Pottery. And I didn't mind giving Bibles for Missions 1995 for it. It is the larger one, and on the internet, the sales are like $60 for the large one. And if you have the pair, the smaller one too, it's like $95. So I guess they're pretty popular. But anyways, yeah, so I had this white macrame from Steve, my brother, along with a monstrous bag full of very large macrames. I've used them around the house over the years. And he often would just be hanging things like that outside. This is a, an acrylic um, cord so it's very washable, came out nice and clean. And this is another one of my very crazy footed, um, I know it's a kind of a weird, boring olive green, but this 
plant hanger is kind of strange because it's very narrow at the bottom and then can open up bigger at the top. So there wasn't much of anything I could find to hang in it. I don't make macrame. I do beading. Of, I do my own plant hangers, uh, beaded ones that I have shown you. Oops, I forgot to put my third succulent in there. I'll have to go get one. There, is that better? Now I got the plant swinging. I love this. Um, I've had it up off and on. I know I've shown it to you early on in our first videos. I changed this area quite a bit. And I used to have beans in there, but I decided this um, bedding bark for little pets works really well to keep it lightweight. I'm so worried about this nail screw I got in there. Very worried. Can you imagine this crashing down on my glass? table here. Oof to probably ruin the radio too. But anyways, that's very lightweight and I did wash it because it's kind of powdery even though it says 99% dust free. Ha! It's a large bag of nice fine chips. So that works really fun in pots too for your faux plants. So that's what I got there. I would have loved to have gone to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and looked for a nicer fern. This isn't old. I did just buy it uh, maybe a couple years ago now. It just catches on everything. <laughs> you try putting, it catches on itself and it catches on the macrame. It's like Velcro. That's crazy. But I like really, really airy plants or spiky that's the style that that I really like and that's why I don't mind ferns so much in the spring and of course I think of your spider plants as being really a retro look probably more boho than anything but that's the kind of plants I like Well, it hasn't started raining yet. I love these crazy frog, two of my planters. Or I think the, the one on the left, the big one, might be considered a toad. He's really kind of homely. I'm not gonna bend down, so I'll just zoom in for you here. I think he's kind of homely. Reminds me more of a, the face of a hippo but I think it possibly was my mom's it's showing a little more blue green here both of these and they're not it's a true green just a light minty green not the blue minty I should say spearmint <laughs> but this guy he's coming in pretty true color um, I thrifted him last year in the summer months and have shown him before he was so dirty oh my goodness i had to work on him so he obviously was used outdoors i don't blame somebody for putting him in their garden that would be cute but i liked him in here and this was my mother's too so i am sentimental about those two planters very fun now this is something norm just bought me it is going to be hard to focus. I'll take it out to show you. Talk about splatter, huh? When I saw this, I thought it was hilarious. It was at a thrift store. So cheap. No Nick's chips anywhere. And it was at Family Pathways uh, last month late last month and we just laughed when we saw it because it is so splatter looking and he knows I love splatter clays so he 
He said, I'll get you that. Wasn't that fun? So silly. I thought it went really great. I could put that frog in the middle of it, but that is really a fun piece. And there's just no markings on the bottom of it. There's no little tiny beige uh, pads on the bottom of it. Like new items from China always have these little tiny beige pads on them. This did not have anything like that, but no markings. So I know nothing about it if that's a hobbyist type piece or not. Never saw that before. So cute. Well, I hope you're staying awake. I have just four more of my collected, thrifted, vintage pillows over here. Sometimes I wish I didn't have a red couch. It doesn't go real great for spring, but that was a choice many years ago. This crushed velvet one was from my brother's house. I was very, very happy to have that, and I did wash it. it came out just fine. Every one of these, they're a little puckery here and there, funny, because I did wash them. This one came out perfectly because it's got such a perfect round foam piece in it. I love these. They're my favorite. And that was a $6 pillow, another crushed velvet one that is uh, foam, a foam piece, and then wrapped in a plastic bag. You can hear the plastic. So it washed up just fine too. For the shadow box, I was happy to take out my little horse collection. I really love them and I don't have them out much of the year, I believe. It's pretty much just from spring and summer that I do that. I really like them because they are in, you know, very specific colors for whatever your decor is. I, I don't always have a lot of black out and uh, yellow, but the yellow and the green ones. I've got a lot of other smaller pottery type ones. These are more fancier with the gold trim on. Um, the pottery ones are real cute too, but they're Trojan horses. So these are all more your ponies. I think the black one is pretty new, a new purchase, and the uh, brown one is a pretty new purchase this um, early this year. And the, the off-white, this one is more white-white over here. Pretty hard to tell, but it looks fine. Oh, and these I found too, somewhere. They're probably meant to be bookends, but they're very tiny. And I think it's hmm, metal. It just doesn't feel like ceramic. I don't know, but I thought they were fun in those colors. There I go, leaning up against the couch again. Now, over here, I do have something new over here. I didn't put a lot out on the desk right now, but I did take the red desk lamp away and put out our very first purchase of a small pottery mid-century modern lamp. I don't recall if there even was a shade with it. This is a shade that we found later, and of course it is slightly different, a little more chartreuse than the lamp is, but it's fun. It was a pretty cool shade to find. So since I was putting green out, I just had to show you that little lamp. And I found this very crazy pottery piece quite a long time ago. Um, well, it was probably like last summer. It has three legs. There's no markings on it. 
I thought it was weird. Norm thinks it's very weird. But it is funny when you put a crazy cactus in it. But I love this. This is a new find. All gold on the bottom there. Metallic gold. But isn't that neat? The mane on the uh, foal. So cool. The design. Just the neatest. Um, very stylized. Mom and mom and foal. Yep. I thought that was pretty neat. Pretty cool. Oh, okay. This is what's new. We had a beige phone here from my brother that we are grateful to have. And I put it out in the kitchen. Fun to have an old phone out in the kitchen too. It doesn't have the paper dial in it right now. Norm said he would get one made up for me. But this is not a push button like my brother's beige one. This is actually the old dial one and it works. It did come with the cord all wrapped up back there. So we found this at again, Nostalgia in Hudson. That was a fun trip. It was like birthday presents. So Norm asked me the other day, he says, do you like your white phone? And I said, yeah, I really do. Because I, we have white accents all over in here. This is what I did with some of my milk glass. This is a big surprise. Way out there. I decided it would be very fun and poor Norm, he got all the work. He had to get out a very big bladder and took all the grape clusters down, wiped down the ledge and then uh, had to carefully put all those up there for me. So when you're in the kitchen and you see the Pyrex that is white milk glass and you look way up, now you see white way up at the top shelf. And you know, most of you already know that I have a collection of miscellaneous large pieces on the top of my cupboard. So this, this uh, top wall then flows right over to the other ones on the top of the cupboards. So that is my crazy new idea. I'm always coming up with ideas, but I love it when I can get Norm to clean things like that right? It's not snowing yet. He asked if I wanted those little lights on in our greenery garland up there. So I said, okay, I'll show him. He loves his mood lighting early in the morning. He puts that on, all these little quiet little lights around here. So I will be doing a dining room and kitchen video where I have lots of little green things to show you. Well, I went through this whole living room and totally forgot a major change to the wall. At least I'll narrow it down for you. <laughs> it's the wall. Do you realize what's different? Uh, the last video I did was a winter one in here. So I had a lot of milk glass out, which I had mentioned. But after we did that video, I got another brainstorm and I was a little afraid to ask Norm I know that it would require some work for him and cost. I asked him if he wouldn't mind considering changing all of that shelving back to the natural wood grain, the, the oak color. We had all white shelving and we used to have 
all wood toned shelving. It was a little different though at the time many years ago. It was not available in oak that we could find anywhere. It was kind of an odd wood color and I never did care for it but when I got into collecting the melt glass I thought that it would be really really nice to have white shelving with the melt glass. I was really trying to get white in our living room. I even had a white shag rug under the coffee table which wouldn't stay straight. So we got rid of that. So I really was wishing that we could go back to the quieter colors of wood. And I was very thrilled that they did have plenty available in the oak. So what do you think? I love it. And I think Norm really likes it too. It is quieter, obviously. It was okay with all the milk glass, but I really like this and I think it is more your typical retro look that I'm going for. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Norm says hello and thank you all so, so much. You are so fun. Your comments are just super fun and so sweet. You're so good to us. We can't thank you enough. And we hope you have a great spring. Bye now.